more in sixth grade. Happy Tuesday and investigation five. Um, hopefully you have your investigation packet sitting there. We're going to start to go through it. I'll read it to you and I'll try to do the problems that I can write on, on this sheet to the best of my ability with this. So cruising along the top, it says this. This investigation considers four kinds of graphs, a histogram, a bar graph, a double line graph, and a part pie chart. What is a histogram? A histogram is a special kind of bar graph. There are no spaces between the bars. It shows information in equal sized intervals. Example, the height of the bars on the histogram below shows the number of test scores in each interval. The intervals of this histogram are the numbers at the bottom that show the groups of scores. So anybody that scored a zero to nine, nobody did that. A 10 to 19, nobody did that. Then you can see that six kids from here scored so if you take this, oop, let me get my pen going, sorry. If you take the six scores here, that's where it's coming from. So those are the scores they got you. Changing the interval can change what the histogram looks like. So now our job, number one, it says make a new histogram for the test scores from the same stem and leaf plot, but use the following intervals instead. So I'm going to erase this little thing here so we can mark it. I'm going to try to move this up a little bit. Okay, here we go. So guys, the first one I'm doing is 21 to 28. You can see that that's these six right here. Next one, I'm doing 29 to uh, 36. So I have in the 30 category, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of them. So I go up to the 8. Now notice, guys, what I have to do. With It's a histogram. you got to come right off of this other box. Okay, so I used all of those numbers to there. Now I'm going from 37 to 44. So 38, 39, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm up to the 10 line, over, down. Feel free to shade it in. Next one is 45 to 52. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Back down to the 8 line. Shade it in. And the last one is 53 to 60. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And I shade that in. Okay? So not quite the same because this was had 1, 2, 3, 4. I made one that has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So depending on how we split the data, guys, we can get things to look a little bit different. Okay, turning your page over. It says this. Histograms and other bar graphs show comparisons. Sometimes they can be misleading. Example, the graph below both show the same information. Look at the scale on the left side, that on each of the graphs below. Okay, guys, so key number one is if I look, year one goes to 500, year two goes to 600. Year one goes to 500, year two goes to 600. They're both the exact same information. Two says, which of the two graphs above exaggerates the growth from one year to the next? That's a, I'm just going to use the term because they didn't give me the left one. How does it do that? If I would ask you what happened to the scales, most of us don't take the time to read all the numbers. You'd say, man, year two is twice as big as year one because that's how it looks. This is a difference of 100. This is a difference of 100. So you'd like it's twice as big. Okay, it says, where does the vertical scale start? So now, they always, in my mind, work backwards. They shouldn't ask this question too yet. They should make me do this. So A, it starts at 400, it ends at 600. B, it starts at zero and goes up to 600. Okay? How does the, ex the exaggerated visual effect create? Graph A creates the impression that the sales doubled because the vertical scale starts at well, it started at 400 instead of zero. So they're saying, you see how we did this? That's misleading. And I can put that in a newspaper, guys, and I can say, look, I'm a good salesperson. My sales have, I can't say the word doubled because that's a lie. I can just say, look at what my sales have done. And most people look at it and say, my goodness, the sales have doubled. I'm not lying. You're just not taking in all the information if you get misled by that. So the warning there to make sure we're taking it all in. Number three, it says Larry made a bar. Oops, hang on. I slid my thing and I got to erase this now so it's not confusing to you. Larry made a bar graph. Uh, the first one shown below that compares the amount of reading 
with Jaleesa's. Complete the second bar graph showing the same information in a less misleading way. The interval line on the second graph is every 10 minutes. Larry read for 48, Jalissa read for 41. So guys, all I have to do is say, you see how they broke it here? And then they went by every two minutes, 42, 48, 44, 46, 48. So it looks like, man, he read way more because they put this little thing in there, that little bro broken line, it makes it misleading. You're allowed to do that. But now as I go out here and I get her going to 41 and back to the bar, did Larry still read more? Yes. Is it a lot closer? <laughs> you bet. I look at this, I'm like, Jalissa, what are you doing? Read more. Oops, please, it's seven minutes difference. Okay, so that page was dealing with can you fight off um, being misled with graphs. Moving on to the next one. At the top, we're working through a double line graph. It says line graphs show changes over time. Double line graphs compare two performances over time. Example, the graph below shows what happens to a $1,000 investment. One is compounded at 7%, the other one is at 10%. Sweet. Now it says, can you make a double line graph using the information in the table below? Label the horizontal axis with the years. So there's 93, so I'm labeling it 94, 95, 96, 97. Label the vertical axis with the stock values in $2 increments from 28 to 50. So guys, 28, you can see that. I'm not going to write all those numbers in there. Use the key to show the difference between the two graphs. Okay, so I have corporation XYZ, and then I have corporation ZYX. So guys, you have a misprint. And you want your extra credit, you write, circle that like I did, and write misprint. This is not supposed to be XYZ. This is supposed to be ZYX. Okay, let's start with this first one. They started at 30, then they went up to 36. The next year they went down to 34, then they went up to 46, then they went up to 50, and then they stayed the same at 50. Now that first one is with dashed lines, guys. Okay, the next one. Started at 30, went down to 28, then it it went to 36, so it's up here now, right above that one, and it's solid lines. Then it went up to 40, and it's solid lines. Then it went up to 46, and then it went down to 42. Okay, so you're just putting those things. I'm sorry, mine's sloppy, um, and the way I try to do this thing, I should probably try to zoom it in so it looks a little better, but Number one, you have to make sure you're using solid lines on the second one and dashed lines on the first one. And now you can compare them over time as we would work some questions. Okay. That's a double line graph. Here comes the pie graph. A pie graph says a pie graph or a circle graph is often used to show the parts of a budget. The entire circle is obviously 100% of the budget. The parts of the circle show what percent of the budget is used for certain things. To make the sectors of the circle the right size, one, find what percent of the sector is of the entire circle, change the percent to its decimal or fraction form, multiply by 360 to find the number of degrees in that sector. Draw a central angle with a protractor for the right number of degrees. Example, in this pie chart graph, food is 20% of the budget. Find the measure of the central angle of the sector. I switched 20% to 0 0.2. I multiplied it by 36. That gives me a 72 degree angle. And then I use my protractor to draw a 72 degree angle to get this one right, to get that one right here. Okay, 25% is nice because we know it's a perfect one-fourth. Now, guys, we're not going to be using protractors today, um, but you can see how it works. Okay, heading to the next page to get some practice on this stuff. It says, make a pie graph for the table to show how Carrie spends a school day. Find the number of degrees in the central angle for each sector of the circle by completing the table. Change percents to decimal, multiply by 360. Okay, so going down here, guys, I'm changing 10% to a decimal. That's, let's see if I can make that bigger so I can, okay. It'll give me a little space to write on. 
Let me erase that. Here we go. So 10% is 0 0.1. 5% is 0 0.05. 10% 0 0.1. 5% 0 0.05. 40% 0 0.4. 5% 0 0.05. Now I'm simply multiplying. What's 1 times 360? Slide that decimal one. 36%. What's half of 36? 18%. 36%. 18%. 18%. I have to do the math, and when I do 4 times 36, I get a 24, 12, 13, 14. This is 144%, and this is back to an 18%. Okay, so you got your chart filled in at the top, guys. Now it says the circle below has a radius of 2.5 inches. Use a protractor and a ruler to divide the circle into sectors of correct size and then label each sector with the correct activity. All right, I'm going to slide down here. So that's going to move all these numbers in the wrong spot. Okay, so now we have to make this thing. I'm going to erase these numbers. Hopefully you have them on your chart by now. And now we're just going to go through it and put the things in here, guys. So I have um, one-tenth of a circle. Now, you guys do what you want with that. I'm just going to go right in order. I'm going to say, what's one-tenth of a circle? It's a little bit more than an hour. So I'm just going to slide that thing off. This would have been recreation because it's 10%. So I'm going to write that in there, recreation 10%. Then the next one is traveling, and it's half that size. So I have travel, and it's 5%. Then I'm back to 10% uh, for homework. So back to the bigger one, 10% for home work 10 percent now you're back to a small one eating and it's not perfect guys but you can see and that's five percent then you're back to sleeping which is a huge one and then i have other so i'm just gonna go up here guys i'm gonna do this other another slice up here call this five percent other and that leaves this big huge one of sleeping and it's 40 percent now, are they perfect? No. Are they close? Yes. Can you get an idea of what I'm spending most of the time on? You bet. I can see these things and say, I spend most of my time sleeping. I spend a big part in school. And then I have those little things that go with it. Awesome. On to the next page. It says, this frequency table shows the number of members in various school clubs. Create a histogram. Marching band has 43. Orchestra has 26, so I go to about the 26 line. Remember, they have to touch, shade it in. Latin Club, not that popular, down at 9%. FFA is up to 30%. That's Future Farmers of America, guys. If you want to be a farmer, you can join the FFA. And then the Drama Club puts on plays, and that's at 17. So we're just practicing what we worked on now. B says, this frequency table shows the percentage of students by eye color in a class of students with various eye colors. Create the circle graph for the data. Okay, that circle graph, guys, is on the next page. So they gave me the chart. I go to the next page to see if I can do the work. It's the same thing we just did on the last one. The first thing I have to do is change the math. So follow along with me because I'm going to make these things go away. 30% is 0 0.3. 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 0 0.1. The math, they gave me one of those, 0.1, slides that decimal one, so this one down here is 30%, 36%. I have to do 36 times three to get this one. That gives me an eight. That gives me nine plus this one is a 108 up here. Um, one fourth of 30, 360. So I know that 25% is one fourth. I divided that. That gives me a 90 and a 90. I love 90 percenters. Those are nice. Okay, so guys, get that filled in quick. 0 0.3 is 108. 0 0.25 is 90. 0 0.25 is 90. 0 0.1 is 36. If I would add all of these together, guys, it would give me 360 degrees. All right. Now my job is to fill this in. Now, they made this very, very nice for me because every tick mark here is 5%. Let me erase that so that's not confusing to you. Okay, so every tick mark here is 5%. So I'm just going to go to this one. I need to get to 30. That's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 
This would be brown at 30%. Next one, green is done for me. Blue is 25. 1, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Whoosh, that's blue at 25. The next one is hazel at 25. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Whoosh, hazel, nice work at 25. The last one is other 10. 5, 10, it came out perfectly. I did everything correct. 10%. So they made it really nice by putting those tick marks in there for us guys um, at every five uh, percents of a circle. Obviously, we don't normally have that stuff, so we'd have to do it ourselves. But this one wouldn't have been that hard to do yourself when you have the 25 and the 25 because you know that would cut the circle right in half and then cut it into fours to get it. Then we get those things divided out. Okay, guys, you did some work with some graphs today. Um, we'll continue to work at graphs. The big key takeaways is number one, when you're drawing a histogram, make sure they're touching. Uh, and number two, do not let be misled uh, by the graphs and the way they make those things. Awesome. Hey, you made it to the end of the video. Um, to get extra credit, besides circling that one in the middle, you write your eye color on the top of the page. Double extra credit, you write down Mr. Bowers are blue-eyed. So go all the way to the front side, Give me your eye color.